Welcome back, Father Murr, filling in for Jess Romero. You know, Father, I always like to lead the show in a positive way, and I, I just opened up my Life of Christ by Fulton Sheen. And Good. You know, we're talking about, he's, he's got a section on John the Baptist. Boy, do we need a John the Baptist today in the church? You know who my John the Baptist is? I'll, I'll just be quite frank. There's several people. I'll say Archbishop Vigano, uh, Father, um, uh, excuse me, B Bishop Snyder, uh, Bishop um, Strickland, and others. There's just a handful of these guys that are saying, I'm going to speak the truth, even if it costs my head. So St. Yeah. John the Baptist, please pray for us. Let me read this section of the life of Christ and then get your comment on it. It says, the awful silence of 30 years was interrupted only by a brief scene in the temple. The time was now coming to move from privacy to publicity, to public, because of the event was to, was to be work, uh, world shaking. Luke connects the appearance of the herald of John the Baptist with the reign of the tyrant Tiberius, the ruler of Rome. Pliny, who was later on to write as a Roman historian about Christ, was now a child of four. Wow. Vespasian, who later on would conquer Jerusalem with his son, Titus was, not, was 19. One of the very important marriages in Rome at the time was that of the daughters of Germanius, who nine years later was to give birth to to the great persecutor of Christ's followers, Nero. Isn't that interesting? Uh -huh. In the midst of this relative Roman peace, and then Bishop Sheen quotes Luke chapter 3, verse 2, the word of God came upon John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. And uh, then he goes into talking about John was living in the desert. What's the connection here, Father Murr, with what Bishop Sheen's talking about? Uh, I mean, he's giving such background at the time of John the Baptist that I don't think many people realize. I sure didn't. Well, what Bishop Sheen is trying to do mm -hmm. and what every great theologian has tried to do yeah. is show the connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Yes. Be that Christ is the fulfillment of everything that happened before. Mm -hmm. And one of the things prophesied about the Messiah mm -hmm. was that a great prophet would come, would precede him. Mm -hmm. To announce him, right? Yep. And that is that is John the Baptist. Right. Our Lord said, "Our Lord said of, of John the Baptist, no greater man was born of a woman, right, than John the Baptist." But there's something else too, Terry. Tell me. And I would I would love I would love to share this with you because you already know it. You already know it. Sure. But yeah, on that on, in the same vein that you're asking the question, yeah. And I'm answering it from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Uh, Sheen himself gave me this idea. And very few times when I'm offering Mass, yeah. am I not conscious of his remarks okay. in this moment of Good. Mass, right? Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. Sheen does not just what he's doing, what you're reading here. He goes way back and he says... Abraham mm. is offering God sacrifice daily. God asks for his, his son. Yeah. Right? Okay. On the way up the hill, oh, yeah, there's a longer version too. You can read it in Gene because it's beautiful the way he does it. Mm -hmm. but on the way up the hill to the sacrifice, Isaac, the son, says, Father, where is the lamb? Right. All right. Now, get this. The father with his only son and his son carrying wood on his back to burn the sacrifice are going up a mountain, yeah. are going up a hill for the sacrifice. Mm -hmm. What is this? If this isn't a prefiguration of a prefiguration of, of Calvary, what is it? The only son of the only father, the son carrying wood on his back, looking for the lamb. Sure. And the father, Abraham, and she does a beautiful job of this. He really should be read mm -hmm. completely on this. The son asks, where is the lamb? And Abraham stops and turns and he says, he answers it with a non-answer. 
He says, God will provide. Yeah, that's beautiful. God will provide. Right? Mm -hmm. How many times you've said that in your life? You, you knew it to a question, to a problem that came up. We don't know what to do. And we know in faith, God will provide. Amen. Okay. Well, again, he asks him, but where is the lamb? Right. God will provide. And Sheen says this. And he does it in the most dramatic fashion. That's why it, it's, it's a, he really impressed it upon me. Mm -hmm. He imprinted it. That question, where is the lamb, was taken up by the winds of Moriah and held there for centuries until John the Baptist saw his cousin, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, arriving for baptism. And what does John shout out? The first thing, there's the lamb. Exactly. Wow. All right. Yeah. So what he's saying is that question, where is the lamb, is answered with John. John was given the privilege to say, Eche on your day. Behold. In other words, there, there's the lamb. Yep. He's answering that question. This is fantastic. When I hold a post. Yes. The people and I say, Eche, Anus Dei, Eche Quitoli Pecata Mundi. Yeah. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. I'm repeating John the Baptist's wow. words. Beautiful. Right? Yes. Behold him, here he is. Yep. Well, I say the same with the same reality that John pronounced it because he really is here. It's This is fantastic. And what Sheen tries often to do, and, he, and, and rightly so, yes. he's making this bridge between the Old Testament and the New Testament, the Old Testament and the New Testament. Right. This exists in no other religion. No. I keep telling people, in no other religion is the is the is is there a Messiah who is pre-established. Right. All right, this is this is wonderful. And this is why the Holy Sacrifice, the Mass, is so central to our faith. And I want to encourage, I'm going to be going to Holy Mass in about 50 minutes here at the chapel. And I would encourage our listeners, if you have an opportunity, at least if you can't get to the Mass, make a visit to the Blessed Sacrament and think about what Father Mur just said about the old and the new. Uh, this is what we need to be focusing on. Like I say, the end of the show, I always like to have this. And Father, you nailed it. And that is the supernatural. I mean, we have to have that in our life. Why do you think so many young people are attracted to, for, for the traditional mass? We just said that at the beginning of the show with Leboeuf. I mean, the, the, the mass is beautiful. That It's sacred. The, I mean, we're tired of the mundane. The world has nothing to offer us. Jesus Christ has everything to offer us because life is short and eternity is forever. Father Murray, your final thoughts before we go. Yeah, yesterday I had a great interview Good. with a, a, a secular television station. Okay. So they're not, re they're not religious at all. But the young woman was, was just so gracious, really, really, really uh, great yeah. talking to her. It was the, the program was supposed to go on for 45 minutes, but went on for two hours. What? Right? <laughs> and, yeah. So, and so, but she said, she came up with this, which is not original, but it was original to her. Yeah. Uh, uh, I believe in God. I, and I believe in Jesus Christ, but I have no time for the church. Oh, yeah, typical. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, yeah, I've heard that all my life. Oh, yeah. Uh, I said, well, isn't that a shame? You're never going to have the Eucharist. Mm -hmm. You're never going to have the Eucharist? And well, well, that's important. I said, important? Christ said that if you don't have him, you don't live in him and he doesn't live in you. What do you mean it's important? It's fundamentally important. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's his very life in you. Yep. What a shame. And you're never sure that your sins are forgiven? What a shame. What a shame. That, that, I'm, I'm sad. I'm sad. Well, she's sort of like, yes, oh. Like, I, never, <laughs> yeah. I never thought of it that way. Yeah, I, I never thought of it that way. Well, this is, this, this is it. The, the Mass, the Eucharist, is everything. Yeah. It is the culmination of everything that we have. It's the sacrifice of Calvary Amen. in an unbloody manner 
every single day, every single minute of the day, all over the world. Isn't that incredible? And if we really it's beautiful, Father, if we really believe that our churches would be packed, and you know, I hate yes, it would. Yes, yes, they would. They yes, they would. That was going on every mass. And I think that there's another thought I have. I don't know if you have been taught this, but I was taught this since I was a child that every mass I go to, think of it as your potentially last mass that you're going to be able to participate and stay focused. It, it, that advice was a priest, a uh, very traditional priest from Ireland, who told me every mass you go to, pay attention because this could be, you know, uh, your last mass on the planet. So that that I thought the beautiful the beautiful Carmelite sisters in San Francisco with, that where I used oh, to be chaplain. Oh, Crystal Ray, Crystal Ray, them. baby, they're great. Crystal Ray, uh, what what a fantastic, what a what a what an oasis, a yeah, paradise of spirituality. Really, yeah. But in the sacristy, they have a great they have a, a, a letrero, a sign, mm -hmm. and it's done by one of the sisters in calligraphy. It says, while while the priest is vesting, it says, "Priest of God, offer this mass." as if it were your first Mass. Wow. Offer this Mass as if it were your last Mass. Wow. Offer this Mass as if it were your only Mass. Oh, that's so beautiful. We can apply that to us as lay people. Well, you, you, leave, you leave that sacristy with that in your mind? Yeah. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. There's reverence. There's beauty. There's Wonderful. respect. Father, could you give us a blessing, please? I could. Thank you. Yes. Please. And thank you. The blessing of Almighty God, Father. Son, and Holy Ghost, descend upon you and remain forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Father. One last thing. We talked about some of your books. People could just go to uh, father, uh, charlesmurr.com. Is that correct to pick up some of your books? That's right. charlesmurr.com. And you'll see right there a section of books. Yeah, please get some. And again, I want to thank everybody for joining us here today and also supporting us here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio, where ultimately it's about souls. That's the why we get up in the morning to do what we do, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ in spite of scandal. Because you know what? We're too blessed to be stressed. We're too anointed to be disappointed. And if hope was money, we'd be billionaires. Father Mayor, what state should we be living in? It's either Alaska or Hawaii. <laughs> the state of grace. The state of grace, I of course. It. I love it. And, and again, Our Lady of Fatima said souls are going to hell because no one is there to pray and make sacrifices. We can participate in the salvific work of Christ by offering all of our sufferings in union with the sufferings of Christ to help redeem the world. What an idea that has been given to us, and it's the teaching of the church. So please, Terry. Join me. Uh, Terry, evidently our lady hasn't heard the latest. Yeah, I hear you. That no one is in hell. Right? I hear you. Yeah, give me a break. Thanks again. God bless you. Thanks for joining us.